John fourteen eight. Lege auto Philippos. Curia. Dexon hemin ton patera, kai arche hemin. Here Philip responds to Jesus talking about his unique relationship with the Father and his revelation of the Father. Philip says to him, notice this narrative or historical present, which we would put in the past in a final translation. Philip said to him, that is said to Jesus, and he begins with this vocative, Lord, Kurie. And Philip goes on to say, show to us the Father. Show us the Father. This hemin is, of course, just an indirect object. And the verb it's connected with, right, is dexan. That is an imperative of the verb dek numi. Dek numi means to show. And here you can see how sigma has combined with that kappa right there. And then we have this ending. This is just an aorist active imperative. Second person singular, show. Right, second singular because Philip is speaking to Jesus. Show to us the Father and it will be enough for us or it will be sufficient for us. This verb here, RK, if you look it up in a lexicon like BDAG, the best Greek New Testament lexicon, you will look under the entry Arkeo, and you'll see this is a word that frequently has an impersonal subject, as it does here. It is sufficient for us. It is enough for us. And then you, if you look at the entry, it says Arke Teniti, um, so to be sufficient uh, for someone something. So something uh, to someone to be sufficient or to be enough. In other words, we're expecting a dative to whom something is enough, and that's why we have that dative form right there. That is what is expected. It is enough for us. One reference I looked to classified this as a dative of advantage. It is enough for us. It is sufficient for us. I think you could also just call it a dative complement in the sense that it's filling out uh, the verb. It's completing the verbal idea here, and, uh, and we need a dative there to complement or complete the verbal idea.